Welcome to another episode of Simply Sarah. Today on the show, we're going to make corned beef and cabbage in my electric pressure cooker. First, we need to make our little spice pack that goes down in with everything in the pressure cooker. I got me some cheesecloth, and I cut some squares of it and doubled it up with some layers. There's one, two, three or four layers. And you can get this cheesecloth right at your Dollar Tree or your grocery store. And here in the middle is the pickling spice pack that comes with your corned beef when you buy it. I just opened that packet and put it in here. I added three cloves. These are whole cloves. There's three of them. Two bay leaves. This one kind of broke on me, so there's two whole bay leaves. This is fennel seed. Here is caraway seed, which normally is seed, which is in rye bread. A little pinch of some red pepper flakes. And then these little black balls and white balls are some whole peppercorns. This is what I like with mine. If you just want to just do the pickling spice that comes with it, or if yours didn't come with pickling spice, you can pick up a little jar of pickling spice right by the spices in any grocery store. And we're just going to gather it up, make like a little bouquet of it. And then I took some of the cheesecloth and cut a big strip. This is what we're going to use to tie our little cheesecloth bundle up. Okay, now we need to cut up our stuff to go with our corned beef. We got our large, this is a sweet onion. I peeled it and I left some of the root stem on it so it'll stay together. I'm going to cut my onion into quarters. For, since about this onion will be about three, three big quarters. See how it stays together with a little root in? You do it however you want to. Okay, now we gotta prep our carrots. I've already washed my carrots and stuff. We love carrots. We are a veggie family. Let me cut little root ends off. And I'm gonna cut them in big chunks. One or two carrots, more, or one and a half carrot per per person. I'm leaving the peeling on. You can take a uh, take you a peeler and take the peeling off if you want to. You can use the baby carrots too that come in a pack. If you want, we like mashed potatoes with our corned beef. Some people put the potatoes right in with the veggies when we put it in the pressure cooker. It's all up to you, however you like your taters. Two or three of the outer leaves you always take off. I do anyways. Slice that little piece off. If it don't bother you, then leave it on. I'm gonna chop some off the stem too. We're gonna cut our cabbage head in half. Be just be careful with your knives and stuff. Please don't cut yourselves. Safety always in the kitchen. Now we're gonna take our half and cut it into quarters. And I'm leaving some of the that would be the core stem on to hold it together. You need good size wedges for each person. And then this part I'm going to save for something else because that's way a lot of cabbage. And then we're going to put that in the bowl. Our corned beef all ready to go in the pressure cooker. Um, this is how I do it. Slightly over a three pound brisket, corned beef brisket. It comes in a pack like this at the grocery store. I put some regular mustard, one or two tablespoons. We're gonna put a big heaping tablespoon of minced garlic and a half a tablespoon of brown sugar. 
And what we're going to do is just rub this into the corned beef. Now this is a flat cut. There's flat and point cut. I think the flat cut is more leaner and stuff. And it's going to have a fatty side to it. All corned beef does. If you want to trim some of that off, by all means do that. I've got it all nice and rubbed in my corned beef. I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to put my corned beef down, fat side down. This is cool tap water. And this is four cups. I'm going to pour it down on the side and so I try not to wash up, wash off all my mustard and stuff. But it doesn't matter if it goes over it. This is what it looks down, down in it. Okay, we're going to put our sleeve down in our electric pressure cooker. I'm going to lock it over here on your electric pressure cooker. You're going to put your stuff in. You're going to slide your locking lid over and it locks. You want to make sure your little thing up here it says exhaust airtight and exhaust you want to make sure that little arrow is on your airtight now we're going to put this corned beef on for 45 minutes and i'm going to go up to 45 minutes and then i'm going to go over here let me talk and push start and then it's going to say 45 minutes for a while and it's going to come up per to pressure and over here in the red where it still has like a this is like a zero that's going to change to a P that means it's pressurized and then that's when your 45 minutes start counting down and this is a leak pressure cooker that I got on QVC years ago before electric pressure cookers got real popular I know it's over about seven years old the newer models i mean you don't have to have this brand there's other brands out here newer models whatever you get has a browning thing on it now which is wonderful but i'm going to use mine until it goes kaput and then i'll get me a new one um it has rice and risotto a potatoes and yams meat and chicken beans and grain soup and stews and there's your start button here's your pressure um, pressure cooker timer button your delay timer and when it gets done it'll switch over and this light will flash and it'll stay at this little red dot this dot right here will stay red and it's on a warm and when it is done and the 45 minutes are up it's going to beep and sound off and it's up to you if you want to let it go down on pressure on its own I do a quick release when that comes time what I'm going to do is switch my little dot over to exhaust. Steam is going to fly out of here and put all kinds of steam out. And when my steam has totally evaporated away, that means there's no pressure in it and I can then safely unlock my lid. And it's going to do the same thing if you don't do the quick release and just do the, uh, let it come it down on its own. But it takes a lot longer. It is shut and it's locked and it's on the air tight. Don't freak out when steam comes out of there when it starts first pressurizing. It's going to do that. And then it's going to stop. Then you know it's pressurized real good. And then the countdown is going to start going down. But it comes with a book. All of them do. It's even got up here a little quick thing. If you don't want to use the book, you can read the quick up here. And it has a safety thing over here, a sticker. It says, keep hands and face at a safe distance when opening the lid or doing the quick manual release. Always use the oven mitts to reduce any risk of injury. Do not move pressure cooker when the pressure cooker is being pressurized. And after it's been pressurized, don't touch it. Leave it alone. Okay, our corned beef is done. Now, I did the quick release, and it's this going to, uh, steam's going to fly out of here. Make sure you have a mitt, or do it with your uh, tongs or something, because you don't want to get steam burned. Or you can let it go down naturally. 
and you're going to open the lid and it won't open unless all the pressure is gone. Make sure you use your mitt because still there's still going to be a little steam coming out. Also, we put in the little spice pack, the little spice bundle in with your corned beef. I'm going to take it out. We don't need it no more. I'm going to be tossing that in the trash. Get your corned beef out of here. I'm it out on my cutting board that's been cleaned. And we're just going to just let it sit and I'm going to cover it with some aluminum foil while we cook our cabbage and carrots and stuff. The water's still down in here. I'm just going to add an extra garlic. Another tablespoon. We like garlic. It's up to you. I'm going to put my onions. If you want to cook your onion with your corned beef, you can. I like to put it with my veggie. Carefully put in our vegetables and stuff. And now I'm going to put the cabbage on top. Now this is still plugged up. We're going to put the lock, lid back on and lock it. Cancel it. Put our little thing back to air top. You can do five to, five to ten minutes on your veggies. The longer you cook them for, the more tender they're going to be. So, it's if you still want to bite to your veggies or extra tender, it's up to you. We're putting ten, and I'm going to push start. And it's going to do the same thing. I'm tossing my corned beef, but I'm taking off some of the fat. So, it's up to you however you want to, want to do it. You can leave it on. And I'm just going to sauce it up. Thick or thin, however you want it. I've got my fork here. But I I like to, I mean it's hot, but I can handle the temperature. I've got cooked hands. I wanted to show you how quick release goes. You got to turn it in and soft. I'll let all that steam come out. Remember to wear a mint when I'm opening up your lid. And then I'm going to take some of the juices and ladle it in a my Pyrex measuring cup. And I'm going to put a little ladle spoon in it and they can pour it over their corned beef and veggies and then there's the mashed potatoes remember you can do the potatoes with your veggies however you want to do it like you do a pot roast some people will like it with their potatoes and some people prefer mashed 